Thanks, Gwen. Yeah, we're going to be uh, moving all over the planet here, so uh, covering a lot of ground, literally. I won't dally along here too much. Uh, Forward-looking statements, I'll be making those. And um, uh, basically give you a bit of an idea on Sitka Gold. We went public about two years ago, and uh, we're able to raise $1.2 million and drill our uh, listing company. It ended up that uh, we didn't in really... In enjoy the results there so we went back to the drawing board and uh, we spent the last year and a half acquiring gold properties that we believe fit certain criteria and uh, um, we we're in the middle of drilling the first one it's a flagship property uh, the criteria that we looked at primarily for for identifying these gold projects was that they had to be in safe mining friendly jurisdictions they had to uh, have good logistics like access by road and they had to be in a geological environment that would um, that already exhibited multi-million ounce gold deposits around you, either in production or being developed. So these three projects, one in Arizona, one in Nevada, and one in the Yukon, uh, plus we have a copper project up in Nunavut, so I'm glad that Gwen's into copper now. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna focus mainly on the gold projects. <clears throat> Corporate team. Very strong, experienced corporate team, um, as well as advisory board and management team. Myself, I'm a geologist and a mining engineering technologist. I've worked extensively in Arizona, Nevada, and the Yukon. And I was credited with uh, two million ounce gold uh, deposit uh, discovery, as well as putting two mines in production in the past. This is our uh, shirt. Uh, price over the last 12 months, so we're going in the right direction. We've only got about uh, 30 million shares out, and uh, management owns about 25% of that. This picture here was taken in 1988. That's my truck there, uh, the Dodge, and uh, we were going to put this project into production at that time. The gold price ended up tanking, and uh, so we ended up uh, shelving it. and. Uh, Miraculously, Sitka has ended up with this project after all those years. It fills the criteria that we wanted. It's uh, easily accessible. It's got producing mines around it, and it's in a jurisdiction that's mining friendly and safe. I'm going to just skip over this, but it did have a resource, a historical now of around 5 million ounces of silver and 120,000 ounces of gold. It was fully permitted to go in production. This is just a chart of the uh, last historical resource done on the property. Uh, what I really want to be able to emphasize here is this epithermal vein system is a very wide mineralized zone and it has high grade components to it of up to an ounce in gold and 24 ounces in silver, as you can see in that one uh, historical drill hole um, 030. This was our pit shell at the time we were going to go in production. Never did uh, mine it, so it's still sitting there, but this is before computers were uh, really used um, by the layman. What we really like about this uh, property, though, is not that it has a historical uh, resource. Um, it's that it's got potential to uh, expand that uh, dramatically. The last work done on that property was a mobile metal ion geochemical survey in the direction of the projection of that vein and uh, it lit up a gold and silver corridor there for 1.3 kilometers. It's never had any drilling. We're in the middle of uh, drilling that right now. Um, like Gwen said, we put some results out. That was in the historical area, but our drill is now stepped off to the south and, and drilling these targets. <clears throat> The property is uh, primarily private, but it does go on to BLM ground, and uh, part of our uh, uh, project is going to be drilling on that. <laughs> our second property is the Alpha Gold property in Nevada. This is in the Carlin District, um, second richest gold endowed place on the planet, and uh, mega deposits everywhere. Alpha Gold is in the middle of that. Uh, we really like this project. Um, a broker in Toronto coined this the Moonshot Project, <laughs> and I think it's, it's probably true because it's, uh, when you hit down there, you usually hit a, a, a pretty substantial 
uh, deposit. Um, this picture here is, uh, these little elephants are actually mega gold deposits. Uh, there's over 30 mines in production down there. And where alpha gold is, is um, this, this cartoon uh, picture has, is really trying to demonstrate that most of these Carlin type deposits are found at structural intersections. And uh, where alpha gold is, it's a projection of the Cortez trend uh, with an a anticline called the Garden Valley Anticline. Cortez trend has around 50 million ounces of gold uh, discovered to date. This uh, goes into the geology a bit more of why we like it. And um, we've permitted to drill this thing uh, up to 11 drill holes and plan on moving in there in the next month or two. This is a cross section that shows um, the, the lower plate carbonates uh, uh, preserved there. If that's the case, um, we have a good possibility of uh, discovery there in, in our opinion. So that's our second property. The third one is um, in the Yukon. This is my background here. Um, I've worked up there for many decades and uh, we acquired this property last summer and did a bit of work on it, but uh, what's nice about this is it was uh, a very remote area until about two years ago when a plaster miner cut a road through there and opened it up. Um, so there was uh, an opportunity to do some preliminary work, which happened over the last couple of years. This is a location map that shows the property in proximity, some of the major intrusion-related gold deposits in the area. Um, the Eagle Mine you can see there uh, in production. It's in the Tombstone Gold Belt, which is part of the Tentina Gold Belt. Uh, Brewery Creek, Golden Predators Mine is uh, permitted for production. And the Red Mound Deposit is just north of us, in the, all in the Tombstone Gold Belt. We like this area. It was really hard to explore before, but uh, with this road, it's, uh, it, it f fulfills our criteria. This just shows the claim block and the surrounding uh, uh, juniors. What has happened recently um, is uh, mostly soil sampling and uh, geological mapping. This area has never been drilled, but we've got six intrusion-related gold deposit targets on the property, <clears throat> and we're uh, planning on uh, drilling that this summer. Now, a recent acquisition has just come down the pike here in the last few days. We acquired the property next door to us, which uh, makes our land position 10 times as big. And uh, it's had a lot of work done on it, uh, over 18,000 soil samples, very little drilling. We uh, are now the largest land package between Golden Predators, Brewery Creek, and Victoria Gold's Eagle Mine. And we're very excited about going through the data and uh, planning our, our expanded work program this summer. The last thing is the Copper Mine River project. I'm not gonna talk about it too much. It's just uh, 30 kilometers from Tidewater up in Nunavut. And uh, it's a very large size project that uh, we've got a discovery uh, showing a sedimentary hosted copper showing that Don Penner, the president, uh, found out in the tundra it ended up running around 13% copper and two ounces of silver. We did some geophysics gravity survey over it. It shows an anomaly around 100 meters wide. And this year we went up and stepped out on that and it's still uh, open in both directions. We also have volcanic hosted copper there up to 41% in the, in the veins. So that's a summary of uh, what Sitka Gold's all about. We're really happy with our portfolio and we're looking forward to uh, additional results uh, of our drilling on our flagship property in Arizona. Thanks very much.